Hey guys, Jack here with episode 98 of Miyagi Mornings, and uh, today we're going to be talking about a skill set that I believe is absolutely criminal that we don't teach in our education system, specifically in our K-12 through education system. We take 13 years of a person's life and we don't teach this thing. And I didn't put the name of it in the title. And the reason I didn't is because when I first say it, some of you that have never learned about it are going to go, oh, this is boring. And it's not. It's actually one of the most critical life skills we can teach a person. Here it goes. Don't turn this off. It's financial modeling. Financial modeling. And I want to give you a little bit of my background to put all of this in context today. And I'm going to go all the way back to the 1980s when I was in high school. I was a good student at things that I found interesting. And fortunately for me, Back then, we had a lot of flexibility at the high school that I went to, and we could pick different curriculums. Not a few uh, electives here and there, but we could actually take like a career path. And one of those career paths was a business career path. And believing that I would get more out of knowledge of money and business principles than I would about calculating the, 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 the circumference radius or, or volume of a sphere, um, I decided to take that path, and I'm glad that I did. And I was pretty good at it. And so we had uh, three levels of accounting that were high school level courses. And then my senior year, it was an option, and I took AP accounting, which is basically a a first-year college course in accounting. I also took uh, a lot of computer courses, keyboarding courses, some outdated archaic shit like 10 key for an adding machine. I mean, that's how old I am and what have you. Business principles, business law, economics, etc. And in all of that, all of that, and I took like an advanced economics course as well. I never really learned financial modeling. I sort of did. I learned like pseudo modeling in the more advanced courses with economics and accounting. But it was all based on here's data sets. Use these data sets to get the answer. It was never modeling. Modeling is, here's an idea for a business, a purchase, an asset, you know, a debt scheme. You know, should I buy or lease a car, right? And then so you, you come up with your own concept and then you model out how that works and what that looks like with the ability to swap variables, not a variable somebody gave you, but a variable that you infer for yourself. You say, well, what if I do this? What if I do that? What if I, on a, on a purchase, what if I put more money down? What if I can increase the trade-in value of my vehicle, et cetera? You know, what is the lifetime cost versus the short-term cost, et cetera? Like all those variables are things that if you're going to model something financially, you need to do yourself. Now, here's the thing. With that educational background and me not really being taught that at all, I just have to, to believe that the average person that's, you know, even with a college degree today has no idea how to do financial modeling. And I'm going to tell you one of the biggest reasons I think that's the case. Because first, let me tell you how long it takes to learn to do this. And I don't mean to learn to do this at like a really high MBA level or something like that. I mean to be able to like, I'm thinking about starting a side business, or I'm thinking about buying this thing, or I'm thinking about investing in this thing, or I'm thinking about going to college, or I'm thinking about going to trade school, right? And then to model out, what do the real numbers look like? It takes about a week to get good enough with Excel to know all the things that it does. And when I say a week, I mean like self-study for a couple hours a day, so 10 hours of your time to learn. That's if you don't know the square root of F all about Excel. Right, if you're starting from zero, and most people today do kind of sort of know how Excel works. It takes 10 hours of learning how to use Excel, and I'll see if I can find the tutorial on Excel that's fascinating. As, as good as I am with Excel, I learned some things from it that starts out very basic and goes through it's longer than 10 hours. But man, if you really want to get good at it, it's all there. So it takes that, and it takes a fundamental basic like middle school to high school level understanding of mathematics. If you understand, please remember my dear Aunt Sally for your rules, right? If you if you can understand that, if you understand how to do basic, I mean the most fundamentally basic algebraic equations that we teach anybody. And again, we teach this in like seventh and eighth grade. I'm not talking about advanced algebra. I'm not talking about calculus. I'm talking about basic numeric formulas. If you have those two things and the ability and the brain and the thinking process to be able to go out and figure out things like, well, what's the average salary of this career path? How much does the average person get for selling this item in the market that I'm in? 
what does it cost to buy the things to make the thing that I'm going to sell? All, like that stuff, that basic stuff. If you can do that, you can financially model good enough to serve most people for their whole life. So you're talking about a week of education. We take 13 years from people in our, on our public education system, K through 12, and now they want your kids for pre-K, so they can start programming them, not teaching them earlier. And we don't teach this. We don't teach this. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Because one of my good friends is a dude named Matt Powers, a very well-known teacher in the permaculture space, and specifically gears his teaching toward children, knowing that children are the future. Matt started out not as a permaculture teacher, but as a teacher in the public education system. And in that public education system, he was lucky enough to eventually be able to go teach at a charter school where we take kids a little bit more elevated in their educational path and teachers have more freedom to actually teach. Matt thought it would be a good idea for these kids to learn financial modeling. So he taught them financial modeling. And then he gave them something to model. Their preferred college education path. What do you, what I want all of you to do, now that we know how to do this, I want you to go home. And I want you to think about what do you want to go to college to learn how to do? Then I want you to find out what it's going to cost for you to go to college and learn those things. And I want you to find out like how much does the average person coming out of college make in their entry level position in that field? What do they make, you know, kind of five years in and 10 years in? And what's your ROI path look like? How long does it take you to go through this career path, fund your education, come out the other side of it, and come out ahead. Now, this is a very logical thing to do. Anybody that's going to invest four years or more of their lives and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in a thing should probably do this exercise. I think that anybody who's not getting all emotionally attached right now to the idea of everybody should go to college, everybody knows that, even stupid people like me, like anybody that's not there would say that, that if we take college out of that, and I just said, okay, you're going to invest four to six years of your life into a thing. You're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're going to do it at the point of your life where you're physically and emotionally and mentally kind of in your prime years. And you're going to take on debt to do it. But don't worry about it. You'd say, well, you're flipping insane. And you'd be right until we put magic words in it, right? Mysticism, but it's an education is priceless. No, it's not priceless. We can quantify the cost of an education really, really well. And we can quantify its average ROI, its median ROI, right? So that average median number is a little difference there. We won't get into that today. But we can quantify that about the middle of the road. We can qualify the bottom end of it. We can also quantify what it is if you're in like the top 20% of earners. We can quantify this all well because all the data exists to do it. So we absolutely, educations aren't priceless. They have an ROI. And it's not a priceless ROI. That's a slogan, not a fact. This is why schools don't teach it. My friend Matt, do you know what happened to him when he sent Johnny and Susie and Debbie home to do a logical financial analysis of the dream that they had of college? About half of those students came back and said, this will never, ever, ever pay for itself. And I figured out that I'm going to be in debt to my 40s and I don't want to do this anymore. For that, Matt was re rewarded with being threatened with being fired from his job. Because, see, Johnny and Susie and Debbie's mommy and daddy were part of the system, too. And they didn't understand this at all. They just wanted Bobby and Susie and Debbie and Tommy and Joey and all to go off to university, just like they did. With no concept that if the numbers don't work, maybe you shouldn't do it. Now, not all these kids decided, I'm not going to go to college. Some of them went, my career choice is really good. Some of them went, my career choice can be good, but not if I like try to go to UCLA. And it's not necessary in this field. When they did further research, they were like, they, there was no real advantage in this particular space in, in going into like a really expensive top school. It wasn't really necessary. It didn't really aid the, the path. So reducing the expense side was good. Well, that made mommy mad because mommy was a UCLA alum and she just dreamed that Susie would go too. No understanding of why, right? Like, the reason this happens, and it's in the end of my show notes here, is because institutions are like people. They defend themselves from extinction. They defend themselves from attack. They seek to propagate themselves. They seek to continue. Well, 
I don't think we would end up with no schools if everybody learned financial uh, modeling in school. But we learn up, we'd end up with a lot less people going into the system of higher education we call university and college. A lot less. Because if you did the math, like half the people that do that right now would not. Then this would require something like, oh, I don't know, a free market that would come in and compete for the rest of these students' education, creating multiple different paths. But this is also something people don't understand. If you, if you model everything out financially, and you should... Well, then you'd figure out that the K-12 system is dependent on the university system to sustain its necessity in compulsory education, meaning everybody everywhere must go and it all must be done with socialism so that everybody gets the same education, even though we know that's a lie because there's no doubt that different school districts have different levels of quality, etc. But we need this belief that everybody needs to go through this funnel and end up in the same place. And funnel's narrow, but we want a magic funnel with straight sides, right? So that every child, every Johnny and Susie and Debbie and Bebby, Betty goes to, to college. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea because some people are too stupid to go to college. It's not a good idea because some people are too smart to go to college. But it's not a good idea because people have dreams sometimes that are independent from college. So why would you have an institution teach people a skill... It would mean that many of the people that learn the skill would figure out, I don't need you. Many of the people would figure out, I do need you. And many of the people would also figure out, I want you. But you would lose a segment. They can't lose any of them. They built the whole system on perpetual growth. And this is the next reason that we don't teach financial modeling. You think that your government wants a group of citizens that can see through their bullshit when they start telling you about all these magical programs that are free like unicorns and rainbows? And they're going to just come down out of the sky and give you free shit? No, because anybody that can do basic financial modeling, and I, I, I can only determine now, listening to some of these people that come out of college with degrees in economics, for God's sakes, that even somebody that goes to like a top university with a degree in economics is shitty at financial modeling. They can't do the basic financial modeling you can teach yourself in about 10 days. And they don't want people to be able to do this. Because then you would make better spending decisions, better investing decisions, better savings decisions, right? Better decisions about your career path. Better and you would be more inclined to drop out of the workforce and start a business if you knew how to do this. Because people are like, well, businesses are risky. If you're stupid, they're, they're risky. You know what I've done with every business I've ever considered starting? A financial model. In fact, several models with several variables built into them so I could swap things around and say, does this make sense? And if, the, if it makes sense, the risk of a business is probably less than the risk of you losing your job because, yeah, we're downsizing and we're tired of you. Ah, we're going to get rid of you because you're too close to like full retirement and we want to get rid of you before you cost us more money. I know a lot of people that that should happen to. You know who's going to fire me? No one. You know why? I work for me. And you know what? I'm not going to fire myself until I don't want to work anymore and I have enough money not to. That's security. They don't want you to have security. They don't want to have, you have critical thinking. You, they don't want like to get up there and give a speech and talk about, we're going to do it all. It's free for everybody and for you to be able to go, you know, let's just plug that shit in a spreadsheet. And I don't work. I don't work, asshole. They don't want that. They don't want to tell you, oh, we're going to spend $65 million to build this new high school and have you be able to plug shit in and do a takeoff like you're the construction company building it and going, that doesn't make any sense. Who's, whose ass are you, are, are you stuffing with dollars with kickbacks when you build this school? They don't want any of that. And they're not going to teach you and they're not going to teach your kids. So you need to learn and you need to teach your kids. You should start teaching basic financial modeling. I think most children are capable of learning the skills and the why and if you do it right, developing the interest at somewhere between 12 and 16 years of age. And by the time your kid is 18 years old, if you're hearing this today, if you, your kid's already 18 and you never heard this before, but if you have a kid right now that's like 10, 11, 12, and they make it 18 without knowing how to do this, you've let them down. You've let them down. Why wouldn't you teach your kids how to do this? And I'll tell you the number one reason that most adults won't teach their kids this. Back to college. Everybody wants, everybody feels, everybody thinks that my kid needs to go to college. You're afraid of the answer to the question, so you don't want them to know it. That's not how good parent treats their kids. That's not how good parent treats their kids. Now, the people in the education system, they know full well what they're doing. 
And I'll just say, they're not letting your kids down. They're abusing your children. That's why my, my grandkids will never see the inside of a public school, I, sorry, government school ever again for the rest of their lives. Because they're going to learn these skills and other skills. Teach yourself basic financial modeling. And if you're thinking, man, I, I know some young people need to learn this, learn it and teach them. If you can fog a mirror, you're not too old to learn this skill and make it part of your life. Take care, guys. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode.